Hi everyone, Jimmy here from Save Stores. Uh, I just wanted to take a little bit of time this afternoon to show you how I finish my quilts at home, saving a ton of money because I'm not sending my quilts out to a long arm quilter, paying by check, all doing it at home with a home embroidery machine um, that a lot of us have, or what we refer to at the shop as tabletop long arms. Let's get to the fun stuff. All right, so now it's time for the fun stuff. We have all our entire quilt sandwich um, hooped in the 10 and 5 eighths by 16 inch hoop, which is a giant hoop. Does come with our Baby Lock Solaris too. Um, and it is a lever action clamp. So it's one you can pre-tighten and uh, get it to the right tightness and then open it up hoop your, your quilt and then clamp it shut. Super easy. Um, I'm getting some arthritis in my left hand and this just works so much easier than the, having to dig out the old screwdriver. All right, so keep in mind also, you wanna keep an eye on your extra quilt that's over here in, in, in the free arm space. So let's go into IQ Designer. That's where all of the fun custom quilting options live. All right. Um, since this machine has a built-in camera and I want to get my lines exactly where I want them, we're going to take a picture and we're going to use image scan. You probably heard me mention about custom quilting. A lot of quilters out there that don't have room for a long arm or don't have a machine like this and they pay by check is what we call it, take it to a long armor. Um, usually opt for the cheapest type of of quilting which is edge to edge and that's basically one single pattern repeated over and over and over again there's there's no customization for each individual block um, with a machine like this um, you're not taking up 10 12 14 feet of floor space which most of us don't have room for and you can do edge to edge and you can do custom blocks and save yourself a ton of money. All right, so now it's finished and it's recognizing and you can see, um, we can go up here and we can darken it, but I think I want it a little bit on the light side and that is actually our quilt. Um, so let's go up and start drawing some lines. Um, this is our line tool. And this is our line properties. This is the design. So if we had just started drawing lines, it's kind of going to be a squiggly line. So let's go into to our line properties and let's select a line line. These are like pencil lines, so it would be curved lines. That's an open pencil line. This is a closed pencil line. And this is just a straight line. That's the one that we want. Next, we need to select our design. We don't want a, a satin stitch or a zigzag stitch. And I don't think I want any of these other designs either. In this button, this is actually a folder. You open it up and there are 10 more motif designs that we can attribute to a line. And this is the crazy quilt. And I, and I really love this, this, I don't know what this stitch is called, chicken foot stitch. Someday I'll learn. Um, I'm only two years into quilting. We're gonna select that. Um, I think I'm gonna keep the color to black. That's what's selected now and hit okay. All right, um, next thing we gotta do is just start drawing some lines and having some fun. I'm gonna start with my short shorties. I'm gonna grab my regular stylus here. Comes with the machine. And just start drawing, drawing some lines. I'm not gonna be perfect. Um, I could zoom in and get a lot closer, but even if it doesn't go all the way to the edge on some of these designs, this is about a 10, 10 millimeter width design. Uh, and if we really don't like the line that we drew, just go in, there's always undo. And you can see how easy it is to, to redo. Super, super quick. I'm gonna, un I'm gonna redo that one too. There we go. All right, I like that. Let's go this one next. I like that. Let's go this one next. I like that. And our last line is gonna be 
this long one. That was the last piece of my quilt block. And you know what? I'm going to do that one over again too. So this is really pretty simple and, and quick. And you'll get good at it. And again, we could have zoomed in, but I, I didn't. Oops, there's one more that I forgot. And there we go. Now the next step, we could add a, a square around it and we could do some, some ditch quilting. I'm not going to do that on this project because I think this is cool enough. Um, since I'm happy with how those lines draw, drew out, I'm going to hit hit next. And that looks pretty neat to me. Uh, we could change the size of the design. We could change the spacing. Um, if it were a design that we could mirror up and down like a blanket stitch, we could do that with this bottom option. Um, and we can link all of them or we can leave them leave them unlinked. I don't think these need to be linked, so we're just going to go for it. I'm ready. I'm ready to sew. And it is now stitches. Even though this one right here, you can probably see, doesn't quite come up there, you'll probably not be able to notice it too, too much. And this is a crazy quilt. I didn't want it to be perfect anyway. So let's go into embroidery. And we are so close to sewing. Um, the next thing that I want to do, because the machine automatically defaults to center, that's where that green line is, uh, but I think it's going to start closer to where that red one is. We're going to go into our stitches and we're going to hit plus one. Actually, no, I lied. Um, the start is the bottom left. I want to pull my bobbin thread up to the top. Um, I purposely didn't use that little trimmer down in the bobbin area because I want a longer tail. I want to be able to grab onto it and I want to hold onto it because I want a pretty knot at the beginning of this embroidery. So we're right where we're going to start. The next thing that's going to be different than normal embroidery is we're going to turn off jump stitches and make sure that jump stitch trim is turned off. I don't want it to trim after it sews out each one of these element lines. I want there to be a long tail I want the knot to be pretty. The first quilt I did with this method, I had jump stitch trim turned on. And you know, sometimes in embroidery, the tie-in stitches aren't very pretty. I wasn't happy with that, so I'm, I, I, I figured out the trick. It's turn jump st stitch trim off and hit OK. All right, so now we can go and put our foot down and hit needle down. Needle up, and I'm just going to use my little orange wood stick here and pull both my bobbin and my top thread. Got a little bit more bobbin. There we go. And I'm going to hold on to it with my left hand and hit hit go. you are quilting your block. And this is just going to take it says five minutes, but I don't think it's going to take that long. All right, so we kind of zipped ahead to the finished block. Um, I have taken it out of the hoop. I did cut my jump stitches. We did have about six or eight jump stitches. I can't remember. Um, and I think this effect looks really nice. I think it's a fun stitch applied to the lines on my crazy quilt. Um, this is the front. I'm happy with the end result. So let's go out. And just doing those two little tricks by pulling my bobbin thread up on the very first stitch and turning the jump stitch trims off has really made it nice and clean. I don't have any weird, ugly knots at the beginning of each element. So I'm pretty happy with this, and I hope that um, you got something out of this video and, and you liked it. If you'd like to set up some time or just swing by the shop for a live demonstration, we'd love to show you. Uh, we're open Monday through Saturday, 10 until 5, and we've got machines up and ready for demonstration. Um, don't forget, like and share. If you have any comments or if you'd like to see another technique, just leave those in the comment section below. and. Thanks for joining me today. Bye.